All right, so <clears throat> we are now on Thursday the 8th. Um, Wednesday was an interesting evening. So after the whole incident with Lisa, um, I'm sitting there and I've had this, you know, I've been contemplating everything throughout the day. My, I'm thirsty, my throat is sore because of this tube, and I can feel that this tube has been kind of rubbing back and forth against the back of my throat. I felt like, you know, it just came back to here, but it, you know, in my nose and, you know, back down to here. And I tell the nurse, I'm like, you know, this has been rubbing against me for too long, and I can feel my throat is trying to close up around it and it's starting to make it hard to breathe. I'm like, I, I really need to get this thing out. And she's like, no, 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 we can't take it out. And I'm like, please call the doctor and ask him, you know, what we can do about this. So she calls the doctor up. The doctor, she comes back in. She says, well, the doctor wanted to keep it in for 24 hours and technically you're at 17 or 18 hours. So he says it should be fine to go ahead and pull it out and uh, we'll just watch it through the night and review it in the morning. I said, great. So she goes and she grabs the hose and she starts to pull on it really slowly. And I'm like, nope, just go ahead and just pull it. And she's like, really? Just pull it? I'm like, yep. And she goes, whoop. And she pulls about six inches out. And I'm thinking it's here, but all of a sudden I feel it come up from my stomach. And I'm like, whoa. I did not realize how much tubing you guys had inside of me. Um, and so sh she's like, I need you to calm down because now you've tensed up around it. And so I'm like, you know, I'm trying to breathe and trying to calm down. She starts pulling it out slowly and slowly. And it's just coming and coming. And, and the only thing I can compare this to is the magician with the scarves up his his arm. This thing just keeps coming out. You know, I thought I had six or eight inches and I swear she pulled out three or four feet of tubing. Um, and uh, she pulls the, you know, she finally gets it all out and I can feel, you know, I can start breathing easier and I pull the bag up that it's connected to and there's not really anything in the bag. So I don't, I understand why it was there, but I don't think it was, you know, at, at that point, I think it was safe to say that it was unnecessary any, any longer. So um, then I went, and, you know, finally calmed down and went back to sleep. Um, I did not see the surgeon that evening and was expecting him to come in uh, today to go into further detail on what exactly I had to go through. And um, sure enough, he was nice and quick and early and didn't, you know, right there as soon as I woke up to explain what was going on. And uh, he came in and he said, so once we got in there and we saw what was going on, um, he said you had something called diverticulitis. And what diverticulitis is, is apparently there's these small polyps, I guess, or kind of balloons, and sometimes they get inflamed. And sometimes they'll get inflamed and they'll just heal themselves. Sometimes they'll get inflamed, you take some antibiotics and they go away on their own. They said sometimes when they get really bad, they rupture. And that is what I had. So I had diverticulitis, and a piece of it had ruptured. And part of it, from what I could make out from what he was saying, was part... It, I wasn't leaking stool into my body, but it, it was leaking something. Um, and it wasn't much, but it was enough that it needed to be taken care of. Um, otherwise it would have turned into a bad, bad situation. So he got in there and he said that he had to remove 10 centimeters or about four inches um, of my intestines, of my large intestines. And once he removed that, he said the option to just sew the two pieces back together was not an option because it had gotten so inflamed around the good parts that they really needed time to just heal on their own um, before they could be reconnected so he had to turn around and install a stoma um, 
which, like I explained previously, Estoma is, um, he reroutes my intestines to a hole to the outside of my body um, that a bag kind of glues against my skin around it and works as a collection receptacle. I guess that's as pretty of a description as I can make it. Um, not uncommon. Uh, a lot of people that get like colon cancer uh, have to do this. Um, so that's uh, that's what he had to do. And uh, that was that. So um, still, you know, I'm what three almost four weeks out I'm still kind of trying to wrap my head around the different lifestyle that I have to go through with this um, you know each day gets a little bit easier but it's still kind of a it's, it's a big change um, so we go through and um, he's like I'm gonna you know we're gonna run some blood tests and make sure everything that's you know running fine and um, you know, just pretty much you're just bedridden for today. I'm like, okay. So after the doctor explained everything that was going on, um, <clears throat> got through the day, came back, said my, my blood le or the blood scores were a little high, but it was understandable because you just went through a major surgery. Um, and my scores have always been high because I have a missing kidney. Um, so they're like, you know, is, are, are some of these higher scores normal for you? So I'm pulling up on, you know, my my hospital app from the U.S. that has all my blood charts and whatnot. And they're like, okay, you know, this we'll we'll continue to monitor this. This seems like it's okay and it should drop. Um, we just want to try and get you off the IV and get you onto, you know, some liquids and then some soft foods and then eventually onto some hard foods so that we can get your numbers back down to where they want or where they need to be instead of pushing the numbers through the IV, you know, just get your body doing it with food normally. I'm like, okay. So we get through the day. Um, get everything situated with my wife to get to uh, to come out and um, everything seems fine um, you know considering I mean, get to that evening and the night crew comes in and we got these two nurses and they come in and they're checking me and I'm like you know it's I'm when I had my kidney removed, you know, there was always a nurse that was always walking by the door, popping their head in, you know, at least once an hour just to make sure anything was, was okay. Um, and I never, they never seemed to do that. And so I'm like, you know, if anything ever really went wrong, you know, how would, how would I be able to get in touch with these people? Um, so I'm looking around and I'm trying to find, I'm like, there's got to be an emergency button for me to be able to press to get them in here. And I'm looking around and I finally find the cable and I'm tracking the cable and they've tied the cable to the hand railing above my head. And it's just so far in a place that, you know, I've got 34 staples in my stomach now. I can't reach above my head so I can't get to this to this button and I'm thinking you know if if things were to turn sour you know I'm kind of stuck here um, so I, I start kind of making some racket and making a noise and, and finally get their attention to come in and you know they relocate the button I'm like okay you know I, I don't know why they wouldn't have made sure that this was in reach to begin with but you know just could just be oversight no big deal you know nothing no harm no foul um and we get through the night and i kind of point out to her i'm like you know in my iv i've got a, a loop 
in the tube and I see that there's some blood that has come backwards in the IV. I'm like, well, that doesn't seem right to me that the IV would have blood in it because if the IV is going through, it should be, you know, not allowing any blood to come, you know, I guess backflow. And um, I kind of pointed out to her and I'm like, does, you know, does this, is this okay? Does this look all right? And she grabs the tube a little bit farther up and she kind of pinches it and, and, you know, kind of pushes the fluid through. But she does it at such a quick speed that when it pushes the fluid into my IV, it hurts. Like, you know, she's, just, she's pushing it too quickly. She's pushing it quicker than my veins can take. And she's just trying to, just trying to run it through as quick as possible and I'm like ow, 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 ow. you know you gotta stop you gotta stop and um, so then she slows down and she tries to get it going and, and um, she kind of walks out and I'm kind of staring up at the IV and I'm looking at it and it's it's dripping but I don't really see that the bag has diminished any throughout the day um, so I'm like, okay, well, I'll just continue to watch it. And about 10 o'clock that night, um, they come back in and they're like, we need to go ahead and take your vital signs. So they take my blood pressure and they take my pulse and my oxygen level. And I point out to them again, I'm like, I don't think this IV is working. Um, cause that IV bag really hasn't, you know, diminished any of the fluid in the bag. And so they go and they kind of move the, the IV tube around and they squeeze the bag and they walk out. And, and that was it. And I'm like, well, that really didn't seem to do anything. Um, so uh, I'm like, all right, well, you know, they're the professionals. If, if they say it's okay, then it's okay. Um, and they came back in and uh, a little bit or uh, a little bit later I have the bag that's attached to my stomach has two parts so there's the part that connects to the skin and then there's another clip on bag that, that clips on the top and the surgeon said if anything was to leak out the sides um, of the bottom section, the whole thing needed to be replaced, which is not that big of a deal. You just kind of pull the tape off, put some medical glue on, and, and glue a new one on. Um, so I could see that it was starting to leak out the side. So I hit the button, I call them to come in, and I said, you know, my bag is starting to leak a little, we need to replace this. And she comes over and she looks at it. She says, oh, it's not leaking out the top you'll be fine and I said no that's not what the doctor said so the doctor said if it's leaking out anywhere it needs to be replaced and she kind of walked out of the room and I'm guessing she went um, but I asked her I said can we call the doctor about this and so she walks out of the room and she calls the doctor and she comes back in a couple minutes later and um, we replace the bag like I was expecting. It's like, okay, you know, no big deal. I'm not really sure why I had to ask for it, but, you know, we got it done. Um, came back in um, a little bit later and, or uh, no, a little bit later in the evening. Um, I'm still having problems moving around and I've got one of those medical pee containers and I'm trying to pee into the container the best that I can as quickly as I can get up out of bed and this particular opportunity was not fast enough and I ended up spilling the container on myself so I hit the button again and I called the nurse in and I said you know I I had an accident I wasn't able to 
to get into the container and I need to uh, I need some clean sheets I need to be cleaned up um, this is about four o'clock in the morning and she comes in she says uh, she says oh okay and she walks into the bathroom and she grabs uh, a handful of toilet paper and hands it to me you know, I've I've spilled probably a third of this container probably 300 milliliters worth of, of urine on myself and she hands me this rolled up pieces of uh, toilet paper and I tell her this is a bigger situation than this this isn't gonna this isn't gonna clean me up and she says um, it's okay we're gonna give you a bath in two hours and I looked at her straight and I said I'm not sitting in this for two hours and she kind of rolls her eyes a little bit and says okay and she goes into the into the bathroom and you know goes out and gets some new sheets and you know, I finally get out of bed she can see how bad it really is she gets everything cleaned up I lay back down and go back to sleep so after I get cleaned up I fall asleep and make it through the rest of the evening um, get through the next day so the doctor said I need to apologize for what happened last night um, he's like you know with the incident and I'm like oh with the the bag replacement he said well with that and with them not trying to redo the IV um, it seems like we have kind of a, a lazy issue kind of going on and I'm like he said I, I was pretty upset when they called me last night um, to tell me about that I'm like well the only reason that they called you is because I asked them to call you and he said what I'm like yeah when we had the bag issue I was like you know they didn't want to clean that up and replace the bag and I asked them to call you and I guess that's when they spoke to you about the IV as well he's like okay you know I'm, I'm very sorry about that I'm gonna go and handle this right now and I was like okay you know, somebody somebody gonna get in trouble um, but he says everything looks good so we're just gonna kind of continue to move through with this so we go through the day rest of the day um, everything seems to be fine um, and then we get to the next night um, I think it was just Friday night and I've got the same two nurses that I had the night before and when we get in there um, again they at, at one point they they had placed the the button out of my reach again um, I don't think it was intentional um, but at the beginning of the evening I, I pointed out to them again I'm like you know they they redid my IV earlier today and it looks like it might be clogged again because it doesn't look like this IV bag is draining at all and again they just kind of squeezed the bag and and walked out and I'm like okay you know again I'm not a doctor I don't know if I don't know what I'm looking at and I don't know what I should be asking I, I don't know you know I'm I'm here all by myself I, I don't know what I'm doing um, so we'll kind of get through that evening about four o'clock um, I have another bathroom episode but I get everything into the jug this time and I get it about a third of the way full and I call them into the the room and I'm like I, I need my jug to be emptied because they're trying they need to keep track of how much fluid I intake versus how much fluid I you know dispose of um, for their own medical records so I know that I needed to call them to have the jug emptied and uh, she comes in she's like you can fill this up more and I said well if I fill it up more then I'm gonna be in the same situation I was in last night where we're gonna have a possibility of 
there's going to be too much in it and I'm going to end up spilling on myself again. And she says, well, every time I empty this, I have to record it. Okay. So go record it. Um, again, this was another one of those situations that it was like, you know, where is the line between being um, privileged versus is this a basic function that you should be doing as your job? Um, so she picks up the jug and she empties it, she records it, she goes back. Um, about six o'clock in the morning they come in. Well, six o'clock in the morning, somebody reaches their hand. I'm dead asleep. You know, this is probably one of the times that I finally got a good couple hours of sleep. Somebody reaches in and flicks the lights on in my room. And nobody comes in. They didn't even come in far enough for me to see who, well, I was asleep, but I wouldn't have been able to see who came in anyway. But somebody came in, flicks the lights on, and leaves. And, you know, it's, it's just one of those, if you're in a dead sleep and then all of a sudden somebody just shines a bright light in your face, it's just, you know, it's not the best way to start your day. And, again, privilege versus, you know, patient comfort. Where's, where's the line drawn here? And I could see this not being a big issue if... They came in, they flicked the lights on, and then we started, you know, taking blood pressure and started doing that. But they just flicked the lights on and left. And it was probably 30 or 45 minutes before they actually came in and started doing anything. Um, so I was a little ticked off about that. I mean, I, even if, if I personally was a nurse, I would come in and say, hey, I need to turn the lights on, you know, and, and try and wake the person up, not just flick the lights on and here we go you know it's this especially for somebody who's in such a stressful situation to begin with and they could tell that my anxiety level was super high at this point just because of everything that i've been questioning you know the night before you know was this surgery really not you know my mind's playing running through scenarios is this really what i needed to do did i make the right choices I'm here by myself. How am I going to get home? How am I going to pay for this? Is, how's insurance? You know, I'm just, my mind's just racing and racing and racing. And so my anxiety level's through the roof. Um, I, I just don't feel like they had any, any desire whatsoever to, for any patient comfort. Um, so they both come in finally and they take the IV out that hasn't been running all evening. Um, again, I, I figured everything was okay, and you know maybe the doctor was just like, "It's fine. We don't need it to be running." So he comes. They come in and they take the IV out, and they try to place a new IV in me, and they can't see. I'm a big guy. I, I know my veins are sometimes a little hard to find. Um, they've even said that I've got deep veins um, when they try and find an IV for me here in the States. So, you know, I didn't think anything of it at the time because it'll take them once or twice here in the States to find it, but they always seem to get it and, you know, eventually have no issues. Um, these two girls came in and they stuck me and they moved the needle around and they searched and then they stuck me again. And they moved the needle around, they searched, and they stuck me again. And then they realized that they couldn't do it in my right arm, so then they did it over my left arm, and they just stuck me and stuck me and stuck me and stuck me and stuck me. Um, they probably tried 15 or 16 times to try and find uh, some kind of IV or uh, some kind of vein that they could get that they could use. Um, and 
at this point, you know, I, I could understand them trying to do the IV, trying to find the new IV because the doctor said the day before that he was upset that they didn't even try yesterday. And now, so today it seems like they're going to try, but for the number of times that they tried, it just seems like they wanted to just puncture me enough times to make it look like they gave an attempt. Um, I really don't feel like they were trying to find an IV. I think they were just trying to make it look like, oh, well, we tried and we just couldn't do it. Sorry. Um, so eventually they got to the point, I told them, I said, I, I can't do this anymore. And they're like, well, we got to get an IV in you. And I said, well, we have to wait for the doctor to get here then. Because I can't have you guys sit here and stick me and stick me and stick me and stick me. I can't take it anymore. And so they said, okay. And they left the IV out and they left. And um, at that point, my anxiety was so high that I got my phone out and I started looking for private charter companies. Um, I started requesting online quotes for, you know, medical air ambulances to fly me out that night. You know, got quotes for that. That's crazy expensive. Um, I'm like, well, I feel comfortable enough that I could probably sit up and I don't need like an ambulance type airplane. I just probably just need a private jet at this point or a private plane just to get me, you know, if, if I can just get back to Miami, um, that would be fine. Just get back to the States. Um, so I start reaching out to companies for private jets to see what it would take to get a plane in there. I'm texting my wife and I'm like, I, I got to get out of here. This isn't a situation where I can just sit here any longer and say, oh, I just need to suck it up and be strong. I mean, this is this is a serious situation in my mind at this point because they're like, well, we need to get this IV in you because if we need to get emergency medicine in you, this is the quickest way to get it. And in my mind, I'm thinking, well, if you can't get the IV in me to begin with, then I need to get somewhere where they can get uh, in a working IV in me. And if that's not, I, I, apparently I've reached the extent of what you can do. So I need to get to a hospital that can further my recovery. Um, if you're saying that this could be as bad as what you're making it out to sound. So I called my wife up while I'm waiting for these quotes to come back. And I'm like, call the insurance company and tell them what's going on. Tell them that you know, I realize that this isn't an emergency situation now, but the way that the doctor and the nurses are explaining that it could turn into an emergency is said, you know, this could be a worse situation if I can't get to where I need to be, or at least get to somebody who can take care of me the way that I need to be taken care of. Um, so she's like, I understand. So she's calling the insurance company. I'm still calling people um, a couple hours go by the doctor comes in and the doctor's like you know what um, let me see uh, let me see your arms let me see you know what's going on I you know I heard we're still having a problem with the IV and he looks at my arms and I can kind of see that he's not happy with what he sees and um, he's like we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and try and get you another IV in here um, for the meantime, we're going to have to, the antibiotics that we've been doing through your IV, we're going to have to give you a shot instead for right now. And I'm like, that's fine. Um, and I, he said, I, you know, I need to know what happened last night. So I, I explained to him, you know, they came in, they squeezed the bag, nothing happened. You know, they, they came in, they wanted me to sit in soiled sheets for two hours. They didn't want to clean me up. Um, you know, they came in and they, you can see my arms. They just poke me and poke me and poke me and poke me and we're not getting anywhere. And he said, okay, so 
yeah, I could see he was kind of tiptoeing around questions on trying to point anybody out or whatnot. And he says, I just need to know, do you feel comfortable and safe with the current staff that we have in the evenings? And I said, no. And he said, that's all I needed to know. And he immediately left the room and I could hear he was chewing somebody out on the outside of the door. And I'm like, you know, good. You know, I'm I'm happy. You know, hopefully what I've had to go through, nobody else will have to go through because somebody doesn't want to do their job properly or doesn't understand the importance of their job. Um, so the doctor came back in. He's like, I just want to tell you, you, your blood work's still looking good. It's looking better and better by the day. You know, I see you walking around. You're you're healing really well. And I said, okay, well, let me ask you this then. You know, yeah, I'm I'm starting to eat solid foods. You say my blood work is fine. You know, people are seeing me move around by myself just fine. I'm going to the bathroom fine. Um, is there any issue? with me getting the in order for me to fly home the doctor had to write a a note that basically said he's he's well enough to fly and i asked him i said you know blood works fine i'm you know i'm eating i'm going to the bathroom everything's looking good everything's healing fine is there any issue with you writing me this note saying that i can get on a flight to go home because I have reached out for quotes to get a jet to get me out of here. Well, I didn't say to get me out of here, but to get me home because we have this IV issue. And if I need an IV and not to you know, downgrade the, the skill level of, of what your nurses have here, but if I'm just too big of a guy or they're just not used to my body type, you know, and this IV is this important, you know, is there anything holding you back from writing this, this flight letter to let me get back to the States if I were to charter my own plane to get home? And he's like, no, there's, there's nothing at this point. I'm like, okay, well, I haven't set anything up yet. My wife's still coming in, so I have to discuss this and see if it's even still an option. But you know, this is the path that I'm looking at taking right now. He's like, okay, I, you know, I understand. Um, we'll continue to monitor you and I'll start to get everything situated if this is the path that we're going to do. I'm like, okay. So we get through that day. Um, that was uh, Friday, I think. Maybe Saturday. Um, Friday night. That was Friday night, so this was Saturday morning. So my wife was flying in Saturday morning, or she was coming in that afternoon, and uh, finally got the got the call that she got in. She got to the hotel, and she's in quarantine. You know, there's nothing that she can do. She's stuck there. Um, Saturday goes by pretty fine. Uh, Sunday goes by pretty fine. Monday, I'm actually able to see my wife for the first time. Um, the day that my wife came in is the day that the rest of my group had to fly back out. So Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, I was literally by myself, by myself. Um, but everything went pretty smoothly. Um, I had new nurses in the evening, um, and they were great. They were, they were very attentive to, to my needs and, and what I needed. Got through those days, got through those nights. Um, got to Tuesday the 13th, and the doctor said, everything looks fine. We're going to go ahead and let you uh, go back to the resort so that you don't have to hang out here in the, the hospital room. And I'm thinking, great, because this hospital bed is just so uncomfortable. It's just, you yeah. know hospital it's just what it is it's not any better in the u.s either <laughs> so um he's like we still need you to come in every day and have your bandages changed um i'm like okay you know no problem we'll go back to the resort he's like you know obviously don't get in the pool don't get in the ocean i'm like you know i don't have the energy to do any of that anyway 
you know I'm just looking to get out of this environment and get back to you know a, a more comfortable bed so they let me go and uh, we get back to the hotel or to the resort and everything goes fine and um, so this is the 13th and we're like well we can't we said since everything has kind of progressed okay um, we decided not to try and charter a private flight back because it was going to be like 10 or 15 grand and the you know the morning that I was getting stuck and stuck and stuck I was totally ready to pay that and and get off but now that I you know I had my wife next to me I was at the resort you know I was able to you know kind of be just a, a normal person for the most part again um, we decided okay well we're just gonna stick this out because there's only one flight uh, per week that flies in here from the United States and that's on Saturday so this was the 13th Tuesday the 13th so we had to wait here until Saturday the 17th so uh, Wednesday we went to the hospital and they got us in they pulled the bandages off and they said oh there's a little bit of leakage of you know some fluid at the bottom of your incision but it doesn't seem to be anything serious so they cleaned me up put me back together and we went back to the resort you know had the day there did the same thing Thursday went in Thursday had a, like uh, you know we're still seeing a little bit of leakage you know at the bottom of your incision but nothing nothing that we're too worried about okay so I forgot to add a portion of something that happened on Thursday uh, when I went to go in to get my bandages changed, um, the remember I said that there's a two parts to the the system, and if the bottom part comes loose, it needs to be replaced. Well, when we came in, the bottom part had come loose, and some s stuff had started to seep out the side, some poo. Um, so I felt something wet on my belly, and I reached down, and when I lifted my hand up, I had some poo on my fingers, and I told the nurse, I said, you know this is starting to leak you know I need to wash this off and we need to replace the uh, the apparatus so she comes over with a piece of gauze that's been soaking in some alcohol that she was using to clean and she comes over and she squirts it onto my hands that has the poo on it and I look over at my wife and my wife looks over at me and we both have this strange this, the same kind of confused look on our face like did she really just pour alcohol on top of the poo on top of my hand and I look back over at her and she says just wipe that around and you'll be fine and I look back at my wife again and she's got the same confused look on my face I look back at the the nurse I said well can I wipe the poo off first before I wipe this around and the nurse says oh yeah 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 let's do that and then hands me a paper towel and I clean the poo off and then she puts some more alcohol on um, but these were you know again kind of the you know common sense you know how are we really putting the cart before the horse in this kind of situation where you know you can actively see that you're putting alcohol on poo and then told me to just wipe the poo all over my hands kind of um, but anyway Back to the story and went in Friday and we were like well we've got to get a COVID test to get off the island before they let us on the plane to fly back home he said well we know that you guys do COVID tests here since I have to come in and have my bandages redone can we just get the COVID test done at the hospital as well and they're like no you can't do that I'm like well why can't we and they said, well because you don't have an appointment to get a COVID test done I'm sure everybody's done a COVID test now and knows that it takes all of 30 seconds for them to shove that swab up your nose and I'm like I've, I've already made an appointment to be here for you to change out all my bandages but you can't stick the cotton swab up my nose 
as well, and they're like, no, we can't do that. Like, okay. So we call our resort. Our resort's like, there's another hospital or another urgent care type facility um, that doesn't require you to have um, a, a reservation or a, you know, check a call ahead type thing. You can just go in. I'm like, all right. So we call our cab dryer Kelly. We kept using Kelly. Kelly's awesome. Um, and Kelly took us over to the new place and, you know, took them about an hour, hour and a half before they could finally see us and get us put in. Um, we got the, got the COVID test taken care of there. So we should be, you know, as long as we got the, the negative results, we should be good to fly on Saturday. Like, okay. So we got through that and got the, uh, Oh, no, I'm sorry. They didn't call us. Uh, we had to wait. So we actually uh, we had the COVID test, and they were like, let's just go out and get some ice cream. And by the time we get done eating the ice cream, we'll come back. They should have our results. So we went out and got some ice cream, came back, got our results. They said they were negative. Said, okay, we should be good to travel back home tomorrow, Saturday the 17th. Um the doctor had said, I want you to come in here um, before you leave on your flight on Saturday for me to give you one more look over. Because um, the last couple days, they just had the nurses changing my bandages, but the, the doctor himself was not actually looking anything over. So I said, okay, that's not a problem. We don't leave until later on in the afternoon. So we'll, uh, we'll come in Saturday morning and you know, let you give it the one last look over, give us whatever paperwork we need to take back to my doctor so that he knows what happened. I said, okay. Um, so we'll, uh, I'm going to stop it for there. And I will pick it up with the next part um, Saturday, the trip home.